Thank you, Sheldon. Good morning, everybody. So I was walking down the hall. I saw this big word, hate, but then somehow, somehow it morphed. Come on, morph, morph into. There we go. But uh, this uh, way of welcoming you visually really does get to uh, one of the important themes, aspects of our, of our work here uh, this morning uh, during the day. <coughs> This is uh, this, at least the second time we've had the opportunity to uh, share the uh, podium with ITVS and others uh, here in the museum, which, as uh, Sheldon uh, noted, is, is really a monument to one of our basic values, that is free speech. And free speech is uh, becoming ever freer uh, economically as well as in other, other ways in what is the elaboration day by day, week by week of the information age. The first time I heard the phrase information age, I was working at the RAND Corporation in 1977, uh, something called the ARPANET, which was being developed by uh, the Defense Department, was just about to morph into the Internet. And I don't think, uh, knowing the, the kinds of media that uh, we have available to us today, that the inventors of these early mass communication uh, techniques uh, had any idea of the capabilities this technology would, uh, would evolve. And uh, when I first came to the Institute in the early 90s, we sensed that uh, the Internet was going to be a very effective vehicle for knitting together communities that weren't really used to working with each other in the service of managing conflict uh, by peaceful means. Specifically, we were looking at the ability of the, the military to work with the humanitarian assistance NGOs in humanitarian relief operations. Those two communities had not worked together, had very different cultures, and uh, the Internet provided a, uh, a facilitating way of them communicating and coordinating their, their activities in various parts of the world. Uh, so we were pretty optimistic into the mid-1990s about uh, the possibilities of the Internet uh, for conflict management uh, in terms of peace. Uh, unfortunately, the bad guys were also learning to use this uh, technology, and one of the things that uh, uh, we have learned is that uh, uh, those who promote violence have, have learned to use the Internet uh, for propaganda, for recruitment, uh, for uh, raising money. Uh, they've even learned to use cell phones, uh, which were a vehicle of social change uh, beginning in the mid-'80s uh, in the Philippines when Marcos was overthrown by a mass movement that was coordinated by cell phones. Unfortunately, the bad guys have used them uh, now to set off uh, IEDs in improvised explosive devices, as which, which, as we know, is a primary weapon of choice in the conflicts that were engaged in uh, in Iraq, Afghanistan, and, and other parts of the world. So that uh, understanding conflict to the, today and the way that these technologies can be used for for evil or for good is one of our of our main purposes. And uh, again, as uh, Sheldon Himmelfard uh, underlined, I think, in a very pointed phrase, that uh, conflict today is not so much a struggle for territory, for resources. It's really a struggle for the allegiance, for the support of mass publics. And if there's anything that uh, our government uh, has not learned to uh, adapt to uh, in this new age is the ability to reach out to hostile publics. And uh, I don't think it's unfair to say that our traditional notions of public diplomacy uh, have not kept up with uh, the use of the, these technologies. And that's why the notion of media as global diplomat is, is so important. Diplomacy traditionally, of course, was one government communicating to its counterpart. But these new mass communication technologies mean that uh, mass publics can be mobilized very inexpensively, uh, whether it was television or now the Internet uh, and some of the social networking 
uh, technologies that uh, Sheldon mentioned as part of our outreach through our programming today. So one of the objectives of the Institute is to try to learn to use these new media to reach mass publics in a more constructive way, to build bridges of understanding, uh, to undermine the credibility of those who would promote uh, hatred and, and violence. Uh, and we're doing it at a time when we've gone even far beyond television and the Internet with these new technologies, Facebook, Twitter, some of the names I hardly can keep up with myself, much less uh, how, how to send a tweet. <laughs> so uh, you all are probably way ahead of... Uh, my generation in, in knowing how to use these uh, technologies, but we want to try to use our work today to uh, think about how we can promote conflict resolution uh, by using them. And with that, uh, as just a, a brief overview of why the Institute of Peace feels that today's program is so important, let me just say that we're delighted to uh, collaborate with uh, ITVS, with Sesame Workshops, we're very pleased that uh, our two moderators, uh, Jamie Tarabe of NPR and Gary Nell of, uh, of uh, Sesame Workshops, uh, are able to work with us to put this show together, as well as the other panelists uh, and experts who you, you will hear today. So with that, as a way of welcoming on behalf of the Institute, I'm very pleased that uh, our collaborator, Sally Jo Pfeiffer, the, the president and CEO of ITVS, uh, is with us, and I hope she'll join us up here, and uh, good to see you again, Jamie.